Welcome back for yet another exciting C Sharp web tutorial. In this one we're going to work a little more with the combo boxes. If you remember correctly I told you there was three types or three settings for the combo boxes. So if you look here I say one two three and you look carefully you'll see I have three. A simple, a drop down, and a drop down list. And how you change its behavior, you can see they look very different as well, is you click on the combo box and then you go to the property called drop down style. And here a simple acts just like a text box. This one is a drop down and it allows you to type into it and select from it. And this one you can only select from what is typed in. Now do you remember how I got values into these? Well one way is I can click on the combo box and I can go to the items property and enter them this way. Another way, I like options, is you click on the form load and for the CBO colors English dot items I add and notice I have all the English ones grouped together and here I do all the French ones. Okay, and notice the Spanish are done in the items property. So I can do it at form load or I can do it at design time in the property window. So three different types of combo boxes and two different ways to put them in it. Alright, so what we're going to do is when you pick something from these values, being English, French, or Spanish, we're going to put the values here in this output box. We'll get to this stuff later. So let's click here. So when on the combo box colors French, when you select an item from the list, we format the output. What is this thing called? If you set a method, you're correct. Notice nothing goes in and nothing comes out. And how I know nothing comes out? Because I don't have an assignment to the left of the method name. So nothing in, nothing out. And look, if you change a French color, we call the format output. If you change the Spanish color, we call the format output. And we do it in English. We're going to come back to here. And remember, it's the selected index change events that we're coding. So let's look here. Format, nothing in. Void means nothing out. I have a string. I take the colors in English, the dot text value, put a new line character, which brings the cursor down a line. I get the French value, the new line, and the Spanish. I'm going to put a breakpoint right here so we can watch this thing run. We come in here, notice I pick noir, which is black and French. I come in here, I take the English value, which is a blank. I get the new line, the French, new line, Spanish. Let's try it. So I'll step through the code and we put it onto the out text output text box. And there you go. Let's choose Spanish. Same thing, we get the English, we get the French, and we get the um, Spanish as well. So we're going to step through the code. And notice I'm in the Spanish select item index change. And there you go. Now if I come here and I type in something, it doesn't work. But if I come over here, it doesn't, like what I mean doesn't work, it doesn't add the English here. But if I change this, notice it will get the English. So we have to make a quick change to the code. And I'll show you how to do that. If you look, that there is no drop down arrow. It acts just like a text box. So when I double clicked, I chose the CBO Colors English Select Index change, when really should be a text change. So we're in the selected index changed. What we really need to do is make it a text changed event because there is no list to select from. So I'm going to grab this code and I'm going to come back to the form designer. I'm going to click on here. I'm going to click on this lightning bolt, which is events. You can see it has this code. What I really want to do is change it to the text changed event. And I'm going to link it to the English select change. So now it should call that code when the text is changed and not when there's an item. So let's test it. Notice it's calling the code for every letter I code or type. It's going to work, I hope. I'm winging this. 
I'm making the changes as we talk. And look, it's working. Isn't that exciting? So, and I'm going to take the breakpoint off by clicking in the gutter. It's gone. We're going to run it. So notice as I type black, and I come over here, and I choose bleu, which is blue, and then I'll do azul, and that works. Beautiful. So what I had to do was change it. When you have a simple text box, you don't code the select index change. You code the text change. And how I link that was right here on the events. But notice the name doesn't really match what it does because I hijacked the previous method. So how about we change that to text change. So this is another way you can change your events when they don't match. And there you go. It worked. It created a new one. And now I just got to put format. You could change it or you didn't have to change it. So I'm going to call the format output method. There you go. All right, super. Now the other thing I want to show you is these text boxes. I have a full name, a middle initial, and last name. And I'm going to show you how we can build the full name as you type. So I'm going to click here. And notice it's not the clicked event. It's the tech cha text change, just like I did with the simple combo box. Okay, so what I have here is every time you type into the first name, it will get what's in the first name and what's in the middle name and what's in the last name. Notice no new line characters like you would see up here because we don't want split. We want it all in a line across. Now let's look at the code here. Is there any way you think I could write this better? I'll let you think about that while I demonstrate what this does. Come down here. Oop, I got my caps locks on. Sorry. See how I did that? However, there's one thing about the code I do not like. And let's see if we can figure that out. Well, what I don't like is I have the same code in multiple places. Repeated and repeated. So, one thing I can do is create a new method. Notice it's got to be between before these two curly braces. So I could create a new method called um, make it private void format name. And I could do it that way. And I could put the code. I could hijack the code. In here. And all I got to do is put the code here. Call the method, and we're done. But there is another way to do it. If you already have existing code, and we are going to get rid of this, you highlight it, you come to edit, refactor, extract method, and we're going to call it format name. And notice how it builds a private void, nothing out, nothing in. Here's the name. And there it is. Format name. Here's the code. And all I got to do is put it, that call to that method, in the three places. So now I have the code shared. And you may ask, why not put it in three places? Well, what happens if I want to put a period after the middle initial? See how I just added that? And I had that code in three places? I'd have to change it in three places. Let's see how the code works. Come down here. So you can put the period in. Code is shared. And I am all set to rock and roll.